God expelled Satan from heaven due to his sin and rebellion. Jesus said he saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. But why didn't God just kill Satan and banish him forever? Why does Satan still exist? In today's Bible study, we will uncover the truth behind why God cannot and will not kill Satan or his fallen angels. Satan is a well-known biblical figure today. What most people do not know, however, is that the word Satan means adversary or enemy. It can also mean fallen. Note that his name is not the fallen one, but rather a fallen, meaning it is in the continuous present tense. This implies that he is continuously falling, constantly becoming darker and more wicked. The book of Revelation says that he was thrown into a bottomless pit, meaning he is constantly falling. This is what pride does to you. It makes you worse over time. If you do not deal with pride in your life, it will destroy you. Proverbs 16 verse 18 says that pride goes before destruction. And note that destruction is not always death, because David said in Psalm 3 verse 4 that God redeems his life from destruction. Destruction can be happening in your life while you are still alive. Your pride can be destroying your relationships, your finances and opportunities that God is placing before you. So how can you reverse this through humility? Satan, also known by some as Lucifer, is the ancient tempter who has been trying to deceive humanity into disobeying God for thousands of years. Satan began as an angel in heaven, created by God for his glory and praise. But Satan was not content just serving and worshipping God. No, he wanted to be served and worshipped. He wanted to be seen as equal or even superior to Almighty God. Therefore, Satan organized a rebellion in heaven, gathered an army of angels, and turned their intentions against those of God. These angels are known as fallen angels. The war in heaven was fierce. On one side, the archangel Michael and his army of angelic warriors. On the other, Satan in the form of a massive dragon with thousands and thousands of demons. God's dominion, however, could not be successfully overthrown, and the battle ended with Satan and his angels being expelled from heaven. Revelation 12 verse 7 to 8 says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back but they were not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. You can see that Satan and his angels had a place, a position, and a dimension in the heavenly realm, but they lost. However, as a Christian, you have gained a place in heaven. Ephesians 2 verse 6 says, And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. But why didn't God just kill Satan and all his angels? Why allow them to escape to the earth to cause death and destruction to humanity? That is the question we will ask in today's video. Stay tuned for the answers. The main reason is that God cannot kill Satan or his angels because they were created by God and in the likeness of God who is spirit. God is a spirit, according to John 4 verse 24. Therefore, Lucifer and his angels are spirits and thus cannot die. The fact that Satan is alive means that God has a specific purpose for him. God has a plan for all creatures. He created them all with a purpose and even when creation does not choose the will of the Creator, the Creator God has a way of using circumstances, poor choices and decisions for his glory. Therefore, let's examine who Satan is and how God is using Satan today. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, we see how Satan fell from heaven. This text provides us with a view of what the Bible says about his rebellion. How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the Mount of Assembly, on the utmost heights of the north. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. Yet you will be brought down to Sheol, to the depths of the pit. Another name commonly attributed to Satan is Lucifer, which literally means light bearer. We see that Lucifer was cast down due to his prideful ambitions. This scripture is a clear statement of what happened to Lucifer. 
Another reference to the fall of Satan is found in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 28. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone adorned you, carnelian, chrysolite and emerald, topaz, onyx and jasper, lapis lazuli, turquoise and beryl. Your settings and mountings were made of gold. On the day you were created, they were prepared. You were anointed as a guardian cherub, for so I ordained you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked among the fiery stones. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created till wickedness was found in you. Through your widespread trade, you were filled with violence and you sinned. So I drove you in disgrace from the mount of God and I expelled you, guardian cherub, from among the fiery stones. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. I threw you to the earth. I exposed you before kings to feast their eyes on you. Ezekiel speaks here of a perfect being who was created by God to be beautiful and precious. But then something happened. Injustice was found in this being. He sinned and because of that sin, God cast the being out of paradise. This is a second reference to the fall of Satan. He fell because there was a seed of mistrust in him, something proud was growing inside him, something that God could not allow in heaven. The reality is this, Satan was a high-ranking angel in heaven. He fell so far that he became not only Satan, the fallen, but also Satan, the tempter, so arrogant in his ways that he could not help leading others astray, just as he had deviated. Satan is also an accuser, as seen in the book of Zechariah chapter 3, where we have a clear image of Joshua before God, with Satan at his right hand bringing accusations against him. In the New Testament, we see that Satan still torments humanity. Even the Lord Jesus Christ was tempted by Satan for 40 days in the wilderness. Later in his ministry, Jesus makes a statement confirming the Old Testament view of Satan's origin, when in Luke 10 verse 18, he states that he saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. An example is found in 2 Peter 2 verse 4, For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, putting them in chains of deep darkness to be held for judgment, Jude says in the first chapter of his letter, and the angels who did not keep their positions of authority but abandoned their own home, these he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. Satan is allowed to live, yes, but he will ultimately be held accountable for his sins. This again gives us some clarity on why God cannot kill Satan and his fallen angels. It would not be just to kill a criminal before a fair trial. God is waiting for the world's judgment, where all will be judged and rewarded according to their deeds. To answer the question at hand, we must first examine who God really is. The fact is that certain sacred attributes of God cause him to act in a certain way. Moreover, as God is always the same, never changing, if we can figure out who he is, then we can reliably understand why he does what he does. God's actions are always a manifestation of his nature. In other words, what God does stems from who he is. The first thing to remember when asking this question is that God is omnipotent. Indeed, there can be no challenge to his authority because he holds all the power of the universe at his disposal. If you think about it, it makes total sense. Nothing that is created can be greater than its creator. If God indeed created all beings and all things, as the Bible asserts, then it's obvious that none of his created beings can rise to a position of authority above him. A common misunderstanding about Satan is that he is God's supreme enemy. Some believe that Satan and God are locked in a battle for the universe. Some believe that God only managed to defend heaven by expelling Satan and his demons. It is a grave mistake to think this way. God has no rival. No one comes close to him in power, not even Satan. The battle for heaven, from God's perspective, was not actually a battle. There was no possibility of Satan winning against the almighty creator of heaven and earth. The event is recorded in Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 to 9. 
and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him, and I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters, who accuses them before our God day and night, has been hurled down. They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. There is something beautiful in the nature of God in that he does not immediately kill Satan. This act of mercy shows that God loves his creatures even when they do not love him back. The second thing we must understand about who God is is that he is omniscient. Every little and seemingly insignificant detail of the universe is intimately known by God. There are no exceptions to this statement. God has a complete understanding of every individual and every situation and choice that individual makes. This means that God has a perspective unlike any other being in the world. He is able to see completely both sides of any story. The Bible says very little about why Satan did what he did. It says he became jealous and proud of God. The omniscient nature of God means that he knew the thoughts and motives of Satan and his demons in complete detail. He fully understood why Satan did what he did. This once again shows us an incredible aspect of the nature of God, compassion. A father does not punish a child if he understands why the child did what they did. A loving father gives his children repeated opportunities to correct what they did wrong. One of the reasons God cannot kill Satan and his followers is that he fully understands why Satan did what he did. To us, it may seem madness, but God knew why Satan rebelled and had compassion for him. This means that although we do not understand why God allows Satan and his angels to remain in existence, God does. He fully comprehends why he does what he does. Free will is a gift given by God to all his creation. In summary, instead of using his impressive power to force all creation to worship him, he gives each individual creature the choice to follow him. This gift was extended to all creation and to all creatures, including angels, because angels were recipients of the gift of free will. There was always the possibility that one day an angel or group of angels would use their gift to make the decision not to follow God. The reason God gave free will was necessary. The point is that free will is an essential ingredient in genuine love. You cannot love someone or have a good relationship with someone if you do not have the option to do so. Love cannot be forced. It must be given to another by choice. For this reason, God who desires his creation to love him by their own choice gives them free will, fully aware that some will choose not to love him back. The problem that arises because of free will is this. If God punishes and kills everyone who exercises the gift he gave them in a way he does not approve, did he really give them a choice? You don't really have a choice if one of your two options carries a certain death penalty attached to it. No, free will requires that both the possibility of rebellion and redemption remain in existence. Thus, because God is just and equitable, he chooses to honor Satan's choice to abandon his position in heaven. He will not be overthrown, but he will not eliminate those who choose poorly. There is one more theory about why God allowed Satan and his demons to live after their rebellion. If we read the gospel accounts of Jesus' life in the New Testament, we see that Satan had a role to play in Jesus' path to the cross. It may be that even when Satan had rejected God, God would still use him to fulfill his ultimate mission of ridding the world of sin. The first time Satan appears in the New Testament is when he tempts Jesus in the wilderness. Three times Satan comes to Jesus with various temptations and Jesus stands his ground, quoting scriptures back to the tempter. Jesus became the first human being to resist his tempting remarks. This is a crucial section of Jesus' story because it proves that he is worthy to die for sin. 
Why? Because only an innocent person can take the place of a guilty one. When an innocent person takes the place of a criminal in jail, the innocence of that person is transferred to the guilty person. They swap places. God's plan was to transfer the holiness of Jesus to sinful humanity. That is what Jesus did on the cross. He became sin and put his holiness upon us. The temptation and success against temptation proved that Jesus was worthy to bear the sin of the world. Perhaps that is why God let Satan go, so he could prove that Jesus was worthy of his task. The second important role of Satan in the story of Jesus is in his temptation of Judas Iscariot, the man who would betray Jesus and hand him over to the officials to be crucified. Have you ever wondered how Jesus would die for the sins of the world if someone didn't hand him over to be crucified? Satan's role in Jesus' life was to enter Judas and make him doubt Jesus' power to the point of handing him over to be killed. Perhaps God let Satan live so he could persuade Judas to kill Jesus and thus save the world from sin. Satan was an angel in heaven who rebelled against God's authority and managed to gather a huge army of angels who shared his rebellion against God. They fought in heaven and instead of being killed were cast out of heaven as exiles. Why didn't God kill them for their rebellion? Perhaps because Satan had a greater role to play in the story of redemption. Perhaps he was another tool in God's arsenal. Perhaps God loved Satan so much that he wanted to give him a chance to repent and follow him again. Perhaps God's love is so great that he gave Satan all the time in the world to correct his mistakes. We know that love cannot exist without choice, and God's desire is for all creation to love him. Therefore, God grants free will to creation and with free will also comes the possibility of rejection. God cannot kill all those who do not choose him. That would negate the free will that leads to love. God chooses to let Satan and his demons live because God is love and love is extremely patient. The question raised about why God does not definitively eliminate Satan is complex and multifaceted. This topic leads us into deep contemplation about the nature of God, freedom, and the purpose of evil and choice in the world. Firstly, it's essential to understand that God, being omniscient and omnipotent, has a perfect plan for everything that exists. If Satan still exists, it's because in some way he is part of this divine plan. Although it may be difficult to understand God's reasons with our limited human perception, we can trust that there is a greater and beneficial purpose behind every divine decision. Moreover, the existence of Satan serves as a continual test for humanity. Temptation is not just a sign of weakness or evil, it is also an opportunity for spiritual and moral growth. By facing and overcoming temptations, people can develop virtues such as strength, perseverance and faith. These challenges are essential for spiritual growth and maturity. Another point to consider is that the story of Satan's rebellion reminds us of the importance of free will. God created beings with the ability to choose, valuing authenticity and freedom over forced obedience. True love and true goodness emerge when chosen freely, not when imposed. Prayer, Almighty Lord, you are the creator of all that exists, the Alpha and the Omega, whose ways are perfect and whose plans are incomprehensible in their entirety to us. We trust in your wisdom and goodness, even as we face the shadows of evil in this world. Give us the strength to resist the temptations that Satan places in our paths and the wisdom to understand that each challenge is an opportunity to grow in faith and character. Help us to use our free will to choose good and to follow you more closely each day. Teach us to see every difficult situation as a chance to demonstrate our love and loyalty to you. May we always remember that you are in control and that everything contributes to your divine plan, including the challenges we face. We thank you for your infinite patience and your inexhaustible mercy. May we continue to seek your face and your truth, living each day more aligned with your holy purposes. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Leave your opinion on the topic of the video in the comments, always respecting the opinions of others. I hope you enjoyed the video.
If this content was valuable to you, I ask that you support me with your subscription so you do not miss any of our upcoming videos. Share this video with family and friends, give it a like, and leave your opinion in the comments. This helps the video reach more people. Together, we can enlighten more minds and expand our understanding. Thank you for being here, and may God bless you.